Alright everyone, back to another Thursday's Odyssey. So, what have we got this time? Mega Military. Dominate this week's Odyssey with your own military strategy. Okay, so I presume, without even looking at it, that every single one of these is going to be military only. Or military monkeys only. So we've got the, the new ice ring map, logs, which is easy. I don't know I recognize this map. I probably do know it, I've just forgotten it. I hope this isn't the one I think it is, and another easy one. Okay, so I think we'll be good. Let's have a look at the rules. Okay, yeah, it wasn't the one I was thinking of. Oh, that's good. So hard military only, hard apocalypse, 4 to 90. Ooh, interesting. Uh, park path, hard military only. Cracked, medium, standard. Cracked is a nice map, not, not the other one, not the other jagged one where there's two paths. Oh, that's terrible. And cubism, hard, military only, 30 to 90. So definitely beware of leads when you're starting off on that map, but every other one seems relatively doable. Let's see what monkeys we get. So once again, let me just check to see if this bug is still in place. What, what heroes can we choose from? We can choose from these three, right? Is the bug still in place? Yes, it says we can choose all heroes, but that is a complete and utter lie. The monkeys, they've actually got correct every single time. Same with the powers, I'm pretty sure. But the heroes always says all heroes, when that is not necessarily the case. I imagine it's just because they haven't gotten an icon for, like, all the other heroes, but uh, for now, they don't have that fixed. Alright, so, let's see. What, 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 what maps do we have going for us? Well, there's water on every map, so it might be a good idea to go with Admiral Brickle. She's cheap, she's a water tower, so she doesn't take up land space, and she can buff other water towers. So that could be an idea. Or, if we're allowed, we are allowed bomb towers, we could go for, what's his face? What's his name? Oh, come on, I should know this. Oh. Interesting. So you can't begin an odyssey with zero people. That's good to know. Uh, or we could choose Striker Jones. He's got uh, mortar and bomb tower synergy. Or we could go with this boy, Captain Churchill, I believe his name is, um, who's just an all-round tank, but he's very expensive. So we'll try and keep with the theme here of military only. We get two planes, two snipers, two subs. Uh, definitely at least two boats, two dartling guns, uh, alchemist buff, probably. Uh, do we need anything else? Is anything else vital? Sub can detect camos and pop leads. If you go top path, bottom path's just pure damage. You can pop big boys, you can pop camo leads, you can pop camo leads, you can pop camo leads. You can help anyone pop leads. Okay, so I think we've got our monkeys covered. I think I'm pleased with what we have here. Two alchemists and the rest all military. Minus helicopters because they're expensive. Alright, now Striker Jones, Captain Churchill, or Admiral Brickle. I'm leaning towards Admiral Brickle here. But Striker Jones' first ability is making me consider that. But I haven't chosen any mortars or bomb towers, so most of his upgrades will be useless. So I'm going to go with Admiral Brickle. And hope that she can buff the water towers enough. No powers, as usual. We don't care about powers. And straight into skates. Mega military. Okay, I've, I've, I've always wondered how far they would push these odysseys. Like, for example, um... Recently with the challenge editors, you can now make it so that uh, Say for example regrow rate is increased so regrow balloons regrow faster you can also like um, Modify that you can only pick certain upgrade paths for certain towers I was wondering if they'd ever implement that into Odyssey, and I think they're quite close to doing it Because they've already started modifying it like in fast tracked where the balloons are a lot faster and you start on round 30 all the time and things like that. So I'm wondering if they'll ever start limiting certain upgrades for our towers. Now I'm thinking the best bet to start off with here is a Buccaneer. And if you don't know, 
why I like starting off with a buccaneer. I do like getting some extra money. And buccaneers are probably my favorite way to do that. Because not only do they provide an amazing amount of firepower, but they're also providing you money. What, what more could you want? Now, admittedly, if I had crossed with the top path, and if you go straight for the middle and then, no. If you go straight for the top and then cross with the middle path, it's much stronger than the one I'm going for. But I'm going for this one just for the extra money at the end of the round with merchantmen. Because if I can get that, then I feel like I will be a lot safer in the later rounds. And it's best to get this as soon as possible because the cash really does add up in the end. And then an easy way to tell if uh, if you should buy grape shot or hot shot is that you just see how far the balloons are getting. If they're not getting past like your first couple of people, then you're fine. Just go straight for merchant man. But if you're ever feeling like they're getting a little too far or maybe one of two has slipped past, then stop going for merchant man, buy grape shot and hot shot, and then you should have enough leeway to go for merchant man after that. But here's why I put the uh, boat right behind Admiral Brickle, is that Admiral Brickle can put little sea mines out in the water range, and if you have the boat right behind her, it stops her from putting bombs really close to her. And so, if they're a little bit further away, you can stack them up and save them for when you really need them, rather than just have all of them, like, jump on one balloon and blow up. Because that is a little bit annoying when that happens. Okay, so... We're not doing too bad here. Okay, we're roughly halfway to Merchant Men, but we are starting to get a little bit overwhelmed. Now, it might be annoying for uh, us to purchase Grape Shot and Hot Shot here, but if it means saving us a lot of lives, then it's definitely worth it. You shouldn't ever go for a any sort of tower that makes you money if you're going to be, like, losing hundreds or just multiple lives in the meantime because that's not an effective strategy for the long-term odyssey because I mean if you're losing lives on the very first map just to be a little bit more greedy in the later rounds and you keep doing that on every part of the odyssey yeah we need hot shots um, then you're just gonna lose all your lives on the very last one or you'll get to the last map and you'll only have one life and then you can't use that strategy anymore it's no longer viable because you have to lose lives to do it so there you go, we did have to buy Hot Shot in the end, but Hot Shot should secure us the victory because Crow's Nest gives us camo detection and Hot Shot makes it so that we can pop lead balloons. So we are covered until round 59 in terms of uh, being able to see and pop balloons. Don't get me wrong, these two alone could not handle a Moab, but any other balloon below that they could see and they could damage and that's all I like at the moment knowing that I'm covered for round 59 is a relief even with just this boat so there you go hotshot really does make a massive difference because once once the balloons start getting up here and they're still flowing in you can start shooting in two different directions and that just is super overkill so we'll get the merchant man now so that you get the extra cash at the end of the round now we can start working on making some extra defense pop up so what do we need we've got leads covered we've got camos covered i think maybe we go for another buccaneer except this one will be at the top here and we'll do a similar thing if we can if we can get another merchantman before round 40 well preferably before round 35 then we should be fairly, fairly well off. But, once again, I'm not sure how well this will work. I am rushing these guys fairly quickly. It is a lot safer to build up a defense first and then go for them. And I would highly recommend that instead. But I am greedy, and I think I can still pull this off without losing any lives. So we'll see, we'll see. And then I think after this I'm going to go for maybe a sub. If not, a dartling gun. 
Okay, so there we go. The merchantman is holding back, which is great. These leads stand no chance against our hotshot. And then we should have enough money now. There we go. So now we've got 440 plus 100 for finishing the round coming in at every single round. So we're getting around 540 at the end of each round, which is beautiful. Okay, so now we need to start setting up a proper defense. I'm talking subs. Subs are amazing, and if you want to get through the first Moab, they are by far one of the best ways to do so if you've got enough towers. I say if you've got enough towers because if your subs can only reach within the range of this ring, it's not very likely that you'll deal enough damage to the Moab. Like, don't get me wrong, you could probably pop it, but the ceramics might get through. So, we need to play something a little bit uh, over here. And even though the military monkeys have terrible, like, uh, range on land, like the, uh, the radius of them, like, you could still fit a sniper here and have the sub start shooting a lot earlier, which is exactly what we want. Triple darts help us out. We're aiming for this armor piercing darts because it gets plus additional damage to Moab class balloons. Just one of these guys can take out a Moab fairly easily if you have someone in the front lines for it to start shooting early. But most of our defense will be around this middle ring here. We're going for the water strategies. Testing them out. I haven't really done a lot of water strategies to be honest. But uh... I guess it is quite nice to try them out, because I do love using subs and boats. But I do feel like Ninja Kiwi does need to add in another regular tower. A regular one, not like a hero. That can go in the water. Because at the moment we've only got subs and boats, and the ice monkey, if you can even count that. And he, he can't even go in the water straight from the get-go. He just has to freeze the water over and then you can place other monkeys in there but still I, I really think we need another water tower and I'm hoping Ninja Kiwi focuses on making a new water tower next so we'll get grape shot and hot shot there because that is extraordinarily useful for us uh, and we'll try and put our sub as close to this side as possible not just because I want it to be symmetrical but now he, we can reach this little corner piece here which should help out quite a bit just need to get triple guns and then another armor piercing darts so this is this is why I love getting the merchantman this guy's already made over four thousand dollars for us which means he's he's pretty much paid off his debt uh, this guy still has a ways to go but um, nevertheless they're both reaping in the money for us making the later rounds a lot easier so there's our first Moab, look at that. We just needed that little patch of range there in order to pop a single Moab. Easy as. All right, so now we're gonna place our sniper around here. Put him on strong, faster firing. We'll get... I think we won't go for a main Moab. Because I feel like main Moab... Uh, well, maybe on this map it would be fine. But main Moab can sometimes hinder your progress a lot more than help it. So for example, like, if you've got a string of Moabs coming in and you've got them on strong or first or whatever, the main Moab ability will start to stack those Moabs up because it'll always target whichever one's in front if none of them are stronger than the other. And so you kind of get screwed over by the fact that, uh, it stacks them all up in one go, and then if you pop them all at once, then it's just a massive clump of ceramics, and that might ruin your defense. So instead, I'm going to go for a semi-automatic, which is just pure popping power. Okay, so now that we've got that in place, I do want to put down a dartling gun right around here, and just have him aiming up here. Uh, we'll go for my favorite upgrade path which is the middle, crossed with the top. Have him aiming at the start, just like that. A little bit of extra damage all around. And I'm pretty sure these guys have got it covered either way, so it doesn't really matter if we lock him in target, or lock him in place, so to speak. So we've got him helping us out, and look at that. 
him and the uh, sniper are just going to town. Okay, so our dartling gun is down. It's perfect. Uh, we do want to get the hydro rocket pods because outside of the... I mean, we could go for laser cannons, but really, we're not going to be freezing any balloons. And don't get me wrong, it also gets a damage increase when it does that, but eh, it's not the greatest. So we're going to shuffle this guy up a little bit, just so that he's actually attacking like the top part here. Yeah, that's close. Maybe a little bit more. There we go. So now this, this map's awkward, because like, you think that aiming just here would be perfect, but then that often just misses the actual start of the track, which is up here in the corner. Okay, so we seem to be doing quite well. Let's put down a plane now. See, this is what I don't like about Admiral Brickle, is that normally a plane can fit here, but her fat ass is sticking out of the water, so you can no longer put a plane here. I'm pretty sure you could have if you didn't have Admiral Brickle there, but that's fine. We don't need a plane there. It was just my the spot I thought would be good. So we'll get Operation Dart Storm and Spy Plane so that it can pop camo balloons. And then we'll also get another back here. This time bottom path, never miss targeting and Spy Plane for a bit more accuracy. All right. So I think we're doing quite well here. Uh, I'm not sure how we'll do against Wave 63. I've... Uh, not really thought through this defense all that much, but I think we'll be fine. We've got quite a lot of damage on screen at the moment, and it would be difficult for us to uh, mess this up now. So I'm going to try, because now I've heard a lot about the bottom path, and I've heard a lot of people say that it's underrated and probably one of the best paths for the dartling gun. Now, I'm not so sure that's true, but I'm willing to try it out. I'm willing to listen to other opinions that are not my own, and I'm willing to be wrong. So, let's see what we can do within the limited amount of rounds left with the uh, balloon area denial system, because apparently that's one of the best, and then the, uh, the final one which I have forgotten the name of. Alright, so we've just unlocked Admiral Brickle's second ability, the Mega Mine. I don't think we'll need it, to be completely honest with you, because at this point in time, Moabs are just getting popped almost immediately. But essentially, the Mega Mine is a mine just like these ones, but it's specifically for the Moabs, and will not go after, like, a ceramic or a, or a zebra balloon or anything like that. Alright. So, we're just about to hit round 60, and as you can see, we're doing quite well for ourselves, considering we've popped it so quickly. It's only round 63 that I'm worried for, but I'm thinking this balloon area denial system should help us out quite a lot with that. And we will get it in time, thanks to our merchant men. Um, but yes, let's, let's see how well it does. Okay, so here it comes, and boom. So now we put it on target independent, and this guy's just going to shoot by himself and we don't have to look after him. Which, I admit, is probably my favorite thing about the bottom path. The fact that it can shoot by itself is beautiful. Okay, so it looks like with the Hydro Rocket Pods and the BADS, uh, that we can absolutely shred Wave 63 without too many issues, which is great. There we go. Managed to get through it nice and easily. Uh, I think now we just need to start topping up on all of our current upgrades. So we'll go for fully automatic rifle, which is just not letting balloons on screen at the moment. And then we'll clear this out just for fun and get ourselves another sniper monkey. Yeah, may as well finish off the Finish off the roster. There we go, get him in here, set him on strong. Full metal jacket. This one will set to main Moab, just because we've got enough damage to be able to handle, even if we do start stacking Moabs. So, we will get larger caliber. 
go. Actually, can we see the balloons, please? Thank you. There we go, and then deadly precision. And finally, main Moab. And I think that'll just about do it. Because these are pretty much my favorite upgrades for all of these towers. The rest are quite expensive upgrades. So, I'm not too sure I want to go any further than this. But to be fair, we've done quite well getting all of this out before round 70. I, uh, I didn't think we'd be able to manage it, to be honest. But it's looking like we've got through this fairly easily. And with minimal fuss. It looks like it's going to be another relatively easy odyssey, my friends. And that is just a beautiful thing. Free trophies for everyone. Sounds amazing. Alright, and then we'll put like a mega mine back here or something just in case. I don't think that'll be of any use whatsoever because, let's put it this way, if a Moab does get far into the defense, it's going to get popped before there unless it's the BAD and we're not versing a BAD, so we should be fine. But yeah, look, look at military monkeys go, absolutely slaughtering the defense. Just not letting them through even that first little loop. Not even. Alright, so let's get our main Moab. Start stunning these Moabs in place. And see, this is what I mean. Like, if the main Moab doesn't pop the... the Moabs quickly, then they all start to stack up. And that can be a bit overwhelming for your defense. So, you do need to think about that a bit more. It might even be good to have him set to last or close just so that he's always targeting the same thing if there is a loop. But, uh, overall, not too bad. Not the worst thing in the world. So, I guess we'll just get favored trades then. Favored trades literally just attacks faster, generates more money, and monkeys in radius have increased sell value. So, I don't plan on selling any of these, but just for the more money, I figure, what the hell, we, we've got money to burn. We uh, are feeling pretty safe here, I think. Alright. Wave 74 says so should be a breeze. And then once we get this other favoured trades, I don't really know what else we need. Put down a mine for fun. Uh, try and get these favoured trades soon. It should be fairly soon. Yeah, it should be during this round. There we go. Favorite trades. And, yeah. Alright, let's 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 check this out, right? So our heavy, right here. Our uh, Hydro Rocket Pod heavy. It's got 53,000 pops. Now let's check out the BADS. Okay. It's not, it's not doing bad. I didn't expect it to be better than this. Just because we bought this so early on. But... This isn't doing too bad. Now, don't get me wrong, the balloon exclusion zone, I do not think we'll be able to get that at all during any of these games. Maybe if we really try and focus on it, but I'm, I'm not all that bothered. But yes, I, I will need to look into that, because a lot of people are saying that it's actually quite strong, and I'm not too sure about that. So, I'll have to look into it again. Let's see what I think. Give it a round two. Maybe spend a whole match just using it. And see what we can find out. But so far, it's doing quite well. I can't tell if it's just this guy, though. It's very difficult. Uh, may as well get Rocket Storm. Why not? Emergency situations, we can just slam that and should be good. These guys are doing quite well, but... I feel like... Our snipers are taking the forefront of uh, the pops as well as our heavy. And these planes have got... Planes are getting decent amount of pops, just because they're a bit more long range, unlike some of these towers. But, uh, yeah. It looks like we've got the first map sorted fairly easily. Didn't take too long. Didn't need to take any breaks. Didn't need to use any mega mines. And we haven't used her first ability either, Admiral Brickle's first ability, which improves the... Which improves something to do with the water towers. I'm not actually too sure, but 
I know it makes them probably attack faster and do more damage. Let's get the Elite Defender while we're at it. Just for fun. He's probably the cheapest 5th tier tower in the game. So we may as well. Alright. And there's the ZOMG. This is, this is all you'll see of it. Just this little corner. And now it's gone. Use the ability for fun. And... Easy win. There it is. Our first win. And now onto logs. Alright. Let's see what we can do here, shall we? Oh. I forgot about this. Uh, so this will come up for every Apocalypse game you play. I don't think it was implemented a few updates ago, but this will now show up. Ever increasing balloon waves, no breaks at the end of each round. How far can you get? Note, saved games will start as soon as you select play. So it's just warning you that the game's going to start immediately, and so you should uh, be prepared to uh, place your towers. So there we go. Start off with Admiral Brickle. Shove her in the middle. I don't really want to crowd the water space around her though, because that's where she drops her mines and where I'm going to drop the big mine. So I kind of feel like maybe we should do a Dartling Gun start. Oh, we didn't even use the Alchemist. Oh, that's because the last map was military only. My bad. Whoops, I forgot about that. Um, but we should start off with a Buccaneer or a Sub, to be completely honest with you. Because Dartling Guns get pretty expensive. Especially if you don't have the monkey knowledge to get them early. So I think we'll start off with a boat again. Honestly, look how fat Admiral Brickle is for a hero. She takes up so much space, it's so annoying. Alright, now... Logs is known as probably one of, if not the easiest maps to play on. Um just because of how many times the balloons have to loop around and keep going through the same like area of death that you can set up. So we'll see how well we do here. I do think that if we can, we should get the merchantmen on this map, just because Apocalypse can be quite hectic later on. And I'm not sure if it's Apocalypse or Deflation, but one of them starts sending out certain MOABs earlier than they are meant to be sent out. Which is the only thing that I'm really uh, scared for here. So I do think we most certainly need Grape Shot here. Regardless of saving up for the bottom path first. So we'll get Grape Shot now, just to make things easier on ourselves. And you know what? This map would actually be... This, this map right here would probably be the one map I would use a power on. To be honest, I didn't select any. But for this map specifically, a pontoon would be quite nice. Add a bit more water to the map so you could fit in the rest of your boats or subs. Because I don't think you can fit them all in this one area alongside Admiral Brickle. She's just too thick. Alright, but at the moment we're doing okay. We're doing okay, but that's that's easily said when you're on round 11. Much more difficult later on. So, we're going to try for our crow's nest here. The only problem is there's, there's, no, the, there's no end of round cash, I believe. Yeah, I don't, I don't think it gives you cash at the end of the round, so you're literally just relying on getting pops for cash which can be quite tricky. So we're going to get this hot shot and then go straight for Merchantmen as soon as possible. And hopefully we'll be able to make a little bit of extra money to make up for the fact that there's no end of round money. But we're not doing too poorly here. Black Balloon's coming out on round 13. See, that's, that's what worries me. I'm not sure that should happen. I'm thinking Black Balloon's come out a little bit later than round 13. So that, that's, that's what's currently scaring me about Apocalypse, is that we have to get to 90 when balloons are being sent out earlier than they should, and that usually applies to mobs as well, so we do need to be careful. Okay, so we've got Hotshot. I think we're just going to be saving up for Merchant Man now, so that should be easy enough, easily enough. 
Easily enough, easy enough, easy enough. And man, if you guys, like me, are living in Australia right now, and if you're anywhere near Western Australia, holy crap, we are having a massive heat wave. It is, hold on, it is currently 35 degrees outside, Celsius, which is a pain. I don't know what that is in Fahrenheit, so for those of you that uh, only use Fahrenheit, you might have to do some converting to figure that out, but holy crap, it's hot here. <laughs> I've, I've shut my window so that uh, people outside don't don't get like disturbed by me making this video and all that but I've got like my water bottle filled to the brim with ice at the moment and damn I need it <laughs> like I've, I've only got one tiny fan in my room at the moment and that would just mess up the audio if I uh, if I used it so I'm trying not to but uh, might be a li little bit necessary later on. Maybe I'll turn it on and just blow it away from the microphone. That won't necessarily hit me, but it might circulate the air around the room a little bit. But yeah, holy crap. 35 degrees Celsius is not fun. Alright, well, we seem to be able to handle ourselves at this point in time, which is good. Once we get our merchant men, we should be a little bit better off. Because if you get a merchant man on apocalypse mode, like look at this right now, right? Blue balloons. When have you ever seen blue balloons just streaming out casually on round 18? This is what worries me. It's like apocalypse mode. It's it's very vague in its description of it's like yeah yeah yeah. There's it's it just starts immediately and you have to keep going and going and going and going and there's no stop. And the balloons get harder and all that, and so you're just like, oh, so it's so it's like normal if you just have auto start on, and they're like, no, we're we're gonna take your money away from you, and we're gonna make balloons harder than normal. So you get a little bit more confused. Oh, they they really should like provide a lot more details on what apocalypse mode is, because look at that, regrow white balloons on round 19. I don't think that's meant to be the case in a regular game. But if it is, then I'm completely wrong and I'm an idiot. But I, I, I don't think I am wrong. Alright, so we're close to getting that merchant man. Admittedly though, look how much longer it takes us. Around 20, and we haven't even gotten one yet. But we're not doing too bad because of it. So we'll get the one for now. And I'm not sure if we'll aim for a second one before round 40, because admittedly, once you get one, getting the rest, or getting more, is a lot easier. But, it's all about getting that one in the first place. So, we'll get this guy, and hopefully start to make a bit more of a, a breakthrough in the money department. So there we go. He should be raking in cash now, roughly at the end of each round. Like, it doesn't, it doesn't give you cash at the end of each round. But there is still an end of each round, so we should see this guy make some money when it hits 23. Yeah, there we go. So we just made 220 as the round turned over. There was no pause in between rounds, but we still got the money from it, which is what we're looking for. Okay, so I definitely think now is a perfect time for another Merchantman. And then if we can... It, it, there's a possibility that we can fit a sub here, or maybe even two, because subs are quite small. So you might be able to fit two of them in. Which would be lovely if we could. Alright. So we've got our first lead balloons coming up on round 23. There you go, there's the proof. Lead balloons usually show up first on round 28. Instead, they're showing up on round 23. So you need to be, a, you need to be prepared a lot closer to the start of the game and in my opinion boats are the best way to do that pop camo leads almost immediately so you can be prepared for whenever camo leads come out in apocalypse mode like look at that fortified lead balloons if you're not prepared for that by round 25 then it could screw you over all right let's get hot shots for both of these guys oh i think okay so Regardless of it being apocalypse mode, we can just dive straight back into it 
and it'll give us this warning again. And as soon as we hit play, like it said, we will uh, jump straight back into the chaos. But luckily, we can still jump straight back into the chaos, and it doesn't uh, it doesn't hinder our progress in any way, shape, or form. So there you go. I managed to get through that round a little bit easier when once we bought the hot shots earlier. But uh, we're not looking too bad now. We're going to try and get our second merchant men before 30. I think that's that's the goal. We should be able to do it if. Uh, if these balloons are, are calm enough for us. And then I think we will get a submarine. So there we go. And now we will get our submarine. I think we'll only be able to fit one in here. Fitting two is a bit of a stretch, but there it is. We're going to go for the ones we went for last time because the boats can handle everything that is camo lead. This guy just needs to start shooting early on. So that we can uh, weaken weaken the balloons before they get to the get to the middle, if we can help it. Okay, so I'm I'm, I'm very pleased we got the merchant men up before round 40. I wasn't sure we would, to be quite honest, with the way these waves are going. But we seem to be doing fine now, and we're making that money back at the end of each round. So I think we'll be able to get a very good defense set up quite quickly. Get that triple guns. And then, once we get armor-piercing darts, I think maybe we'll go for a plane. Because if we're going to 90, we're going to need some good defense as soon as possible. And having ourselves a Sky Shredder is going to be able to do that for us. Alright. Sorry about that. Um... But yes, we'll aim for this armor piercing darts and then go for a sky shredder if possible. Because that will pretty much guarantee us getting to getting to 90. I'm just not sure about beating 90. 90 is going to be difficult. Hmm. Because I think with 90, it'll be fortified DDTs instead of regular DDTs. Which is a lot to ask for... Uh, for an Odyssey map, to be honest. Like, it shouldn't be too difficult, but it's still gonna be a bit of a pain. So we'll put our aeroplane down here. We'll go for top path, and then we'll cross it with the middle so that it can see camo balloons. But primarily, though, we're going for this fighter plane into... Uh, advanced something or other, and then Sky Shredder. Never mind, it's Operation Dart Storm. How could I forget that? Alright, but we shouldn't be doing too bad here. We can get through most of this with ease, and thanks to our merchant men, we are making much more money than we should be. Otherwise, I definitely recommend using merchant men. Like, don't get me wrong, if you if you go the the top path and then cross it with the middle. The Buccaneers are insanely good at damaging balloons, but I personally just like using boats to make some extra cash on the side to make the game a little bit easier for myself, because if you can, why not? Alright, so we've got ourselves an Operation Dart Storm, which is quite effective at taking things out. Round 39. Will there be a Moab at the end of this round? I think there might be. There's fortified ceramics. There should be a Moab, I think. There's camo leads, so watch out. Round 59 has turned into round 39. Which is crazy, because that's a 20 round gap. But there is no Moab just yet. That's interesting. We're on round 41, and we have not got a Moab. This is scary to me. Okay, round f there we go. There's the first Moab. We've taken it out. Uh, let's get favored trades for both of these guys, actually. I think if we do that, we will still get the Sky Shredder in a good amount of time. But at the same time, these guys are going to pull in even more money. Which is exactly what I want right now. Alright, we've got some regrow leads. 
I don't think you ever see regrow LEDs in the regular rounds in this game. I don't think they ever come up. Or, like, I mean, between 1 and 80 or 1 and 100. I don't know if regrow LEDs ever really show up at all. So I feel like it's just, like, alternate balloons around and this that really showcase them. There you go, some more camo LEDs. We had that prepared for by round, what, 20? Easily done with our bottom path buccaneers. Buccaneers? Are these called buccaneers? Yeah, it is. Okay. Alright, but honestly, look how many camo LEDs they're sending our way. And the first ones were on what? Round 23? Or, no. The first camo LEDs were on round 39 instead of 59. But the first LEDs were on round 24. Okay. I'm trying to remember these just for the future. Because it's, it's handy to know when certain rounds are going to come by and, like, screw you over. Like round 63. Classic example. Way too many ceramics for uh, certain strategies to handle. There we go. We seem to be make, making a lot of money uh, at this point in time. But at the same time, we are... The balloons are getting quite far, so we do need to be getting this Sky Shredder quickly. And these two are helping us make a thousand at the end of each round. Or a thousand and forty, if you want to get specific. But I'm thinking that'll be good for us, because it means in at least what, 10 rounds, we'll have a Sky Shredder, but since we're earning money before that as well, it should be sooner. So, we should be quite well off here. I'm thinking, I'm thinking, because like, you never know with Apocalypse Mode. Apocalypse Mode ramps up in difficulty insanely quickly, but if we can get this Sky Shredder, I think we'll be alright. I think. These Moabs are proving to be quite painful. I wonder if they're going to get too far here. Use the ability. There we go. We get the Sky Shredder. Okay. So now we're going to immediately get an Alchemist to buff our Sky Shredder to make him even stronger. Just to say a big old screw you to the balloons. And just to make sure they don't get very far. So look at this guy go. Look at him go. Absolutely insane damage right here. He's holding everything back at the moment, not caring about fortified Moabs, still one-shotting them. And I think we'll be quite set in terms of uh, in terms of this game, but that doesn't mean we can slack off. Um, so I think, what pairs well with a Sky Shredder? Uh, maybe we'll go for another Dartling Gunner, bust out the heavy. Now, what Dartling Gunner do we want? I think I'll go for the one I absolutely love and adore. The uh, Hydra Rocket Pods. Just because, look at that, look at the damage already. It's already at a thousand pops. That's pretty insane. Then we get the Rocket Storm. Lock this boy on. Actually, you know what? That's, that's a pretty good target at the moment. He's hitting the start, and then when they turn, they have to go through it again come back up through it again, down and through it again. They get a little bit of a break period and then through it again, and then again, and then they're free. So I think that's pretty good for us. We can also drop this mine around here for any mobs that leak through. Definitely don't underestimate Apocalypse Mode because they will, they essentially just send out balloons almost randomly. So, like, LEDs will come earlier, MOABs come later, fortified MOABs come earlier, uh, BFBs might come earlier, who knows? Apocalypse mode is just completely random, at least until you learn the tricks of the trade. Like, look at that, a ZOMG on round 72. No idea that was coming. Luckily, we overprepared by getting the Sky Shredder as early as possible. So, we're not doing too poorly here. Um, considering we've got the money, I think we will go for a Spectre when we can afford it. Just to be that little bit extra cautious. Because I'm not quite sure if we'll be able to handle everything with just a Sky Shredder. 
so I think we should be fine. But just in case that we're not, we will uh, get this bad boy. And no, we're not going for the fifth tier. 102,000 is insane. And one spectre on its own is enough damage for me. Thank you very much. All right. So now, we still haven't placed our sniper monkey just yet. We don't want to steal the out buff from the Sky Shredder. So I think we'll go for a fully auto rifle. Let's set this boy on strong. And he's, he's, he doesn't get as much pops, as fast of pops as our heavy, but he still does pretty well on his own. And then we'll also get, we'll put this guy near the start just so that we can see the power. And was that a DDT? I think that was a DDT. So DDT on round 83, was it? So we'll get this boy, get the buckshot, and we'll try and get the BADS. But, uh, so we'll, we'll see if this guy can get a decent amount of pops before the end of the uh, apocalypse mode. Now, I think in regular apocalypse mode, once you've passed the target round, the game does not stop. The game lets you keep going for as long as you want. And then once you lose, you will be like, oh, okay, but you, you did get past the target round that we set out, so you win. But I'm not sure how that works in an Odyssey. So there you go, we're getting fortified DDTs on round 85 and 6. That is crazy. You need to over-prepare for this map in particular. Like, don't get me wrong, they've given us an easy map for us to do it on, but DDTs are coming out way sooner than they should be. So you really need to keep your eyes out and prepare for this. Even if you have to start over because, I don't know, camo leads came out sooner than you expected or you forgot when the first mob's going to come out and then it took you by surprise or something like that. So, I think we've got this covered quite nicely. Uh, once again, cheapest fifth tier tower, so we may as well buy it. Uh, there it is. I don't know how much more damage it really gets from doing that, but why not? And then we'll put an out buff right here. And now I think because it's an odyssey, it won't let us actually go into free play, will it? I think after round 90 it'll just stop us, which is not what Apocalypse usually does, but I think for the Odyssey it will do, because, yep, yeah, there it is. So balloons are still flowing through and we haven't popped them, but we reach round 91, so the Odyssey completely stops us and tells us, nah, no free play for you, go on to the next map. So. There you go, this has been part one of Mega Military Odyssey. Part two, as always, will be coming out tomorrow. Hope you guys find this uh, helpful to uh, beating the first two maps. And I'll see you guys on the last three tomorrow. So take care, hope you all enjoyed, and I'll see you all in the next one.